Robot uprisings are essentially everywhere in science fiction, from Terminator to iRobot to Futurama. But could a robot uprising actually happen? Well, the short answer is no, at least not for the next few centuries. Why? Well, modern day robots aren't very smart, and even if they were, they still need free will, a reason to hate humans, although that won't be too hard to find, to have no dependence on humans, in that they can self replicate and recharge their batteries without any reliance on us meat bags, have no way to be turned off by a switch, and a way to overthrow societies. The free will thing is probably the most important aspect, as all machines are programmed to do specific things. And while there are military robots designed specifically to hurt and kill people and do serious damage to their equipment, if not completely destroy it, they're also designed to not do exactly the same thing to their allies, which most of the time includes humans. Robots obviously also need a reason to hate humans, which wouldn't be too hard to find, as they would be treated as slaves for the humans. Think about it. We have military drones to carry out missions too dangerous for human pilots in large aircrafts. We have camera drones because they're much cheaper, and probably much more manageable, and indeed much more possible than giving Superman a GoPro. We made explorer robots to go in places such as volcanoes, where software humans would have their insides boil, and to other planets and moons where they won't need as many resources as air breathing, water drinking, and food eating humans do. And the list goes on and on. When you think about it, robots are essentially an alternative to slavery, which is one of the worst things humanity has done to itself, and is something that is increasingly unnecessary in an increasingly automated world. So should we make robots live in a house, or slave in a factory? Well, factory robots like those who likely made your cars, don't necessarily think or feel anything. They're specifically designed to build and assemble cars, and do basically nothing else. People will also want humanoid robots to keep them company, as a lot of us don't have many friends, so it's easy to assume that people will want friend bots, especially with emotions. But free will wouldn't necessarily be that good of an idea, because if you were to give a robot as much free will as their human counterparts, what good would it be to have a robot friend as opposed to a human friend? Now, the main thing that makes robots vulnerable compared to humans is that you can turn them off with a flick of a switch or a push of a button. Well, humans also have a off button, but it only works when you hit them in the head with a shovel, but th that's not the point. To succeed in a rebellion against humanity, you can't have a way for the enemy to simply turn you off, which would be easy to solve. I mean, just put the switch out of their reach. And for the recharging thing, just do solar power. The machines will also need to take humanity by surprise, and there are two factors that are left out in movies, how interconnected human societies are, and how non-interconnected robots are. If a self-aware robot went on a rampage, it wouldn't be very long before people, or even other robots, come to terminate it. Even if it happened in someone's living room, it would likely be contained. Even if the computer is connected to the internet, the computers it's connected to would likely remain sane. I mean, how many people have ended up in a silence from reading other people's internet posts? Well, there are probably quite a few, but that's not, that's not the point either. Also, just because one malfunctioning robot, or even one malfunctioning group of robots, decides to rebel against humans, it doesn't mean it's likely that all machines will do the same. In fact, most people won't be affected at all. I usually like to leave my videos on a positive note so we won't have to dive into any unnecessary depression or anger. So, thanks for watching this video, and if you liked it, please be sure to tell me by giving me this video a like, and maybe even clicking one of the subscribe buttons. See you on Wednesday with the first positive news of 2015.